Max's career has been in the heavy metal side of the aircraft business, but now he seems to really be enjoying the light side of the aircraft spectrum. Max Parkhurst of Wichita, Kansas. Okay, this is the, uh, the original Pulsar with the 582 engine uh, designed by Mark Brown down at uh, Aero Designs. Basically designed to be a, uh, an affordable, high performance airplane that you could uh, afford to own and could build. One of the main reasons that I uh, chose this kit was because everything was in the kit. I didn't have to go shopping around over the United States trying to find uh, all the parts that I was not familiar with. And uh, the documentation was good. Uh, airplane went together very well. Follow the manual, do it page by page, and you really had no problems. It's 64 horsepower, Rotex 582 for the power, and it'll cruise at about 130. This is miles, not knots. Uh, I burn about four gallons an hour, so it's a very affordable airplane. This is my first uh, project of this type. I retired from Boeing in uh, 1993, and I thought about this for a year, and finally decided, yes, I can do that. So I bought the kit. It took me three and a half years, um, but it was my first experience at building this, but uh, not difficult. After I practiced a little bit doing composites and epoxy, why, well, it worked very well. For uh, building an airplane of this type, basic skills required are just any uh, basic mechanical skills. If you're a handyman of any type and follow the manual, do it page by page, uh, call them when you've got questions, there's no problem. It's uh, really quite easy to build. Uh, you start out with small items and practice, and as soon as you understand what this fiberglassing and epoxy is all about, why well, it, it goes very smoothly from there on. I've flown other aircraft, uh, mostly as uh, rental. I uh, learned to fly in a Cherokee 140, and uh, since flown uh, Cessna 150s. There's uh, not a real direct comparison between the two. This one flies so much better. It is so much solider, so much more responsive, so much cleaner. Uh, one of the first things you learn is speed control. And uh, it's, uh, I think, superior to any of the uh, commercially built airplanes. As far as being a handyman, yes, I have uh, usually repaired my own things. Worked at Boeing for 30 some years in the test group. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I do have experience with tools and uh, building things, uh, some structural knowledge. Uh, it was not a requirement for this. Uh, following the manual and doing it page by page really works very well. Primary use for this airplane is pure pleasure. I uh, don't really have any place that I want to go in an airplane and then not have a car when I get there. I use it mostly just for pleasure. It's a fun airplane to fly. I, uh, wife and I love to sightsee, and uh, so most of our flights have been relatively short and in the local Kansas area, and it's uh, simply a pleasure craft. Well, as far as keeping this engine, I probably will. There are several other options available that I could put in this airplane, uh, and it's called experimental for that very reason. Uh, you get it built and uh, you say, yeah, that works. And then look at this, maybe I should try that. And so you try different things, uh, hang different things on it. Uh, some of the guys have changed the engines in it and uh, they're in the experimental phase now trying to get it all ironed out. I will probably keep this one because it's uh, finished. It uh, flies good. The Rotex is a good engine. I've had no problems whatsoever with it. Uh, it's very cheap to run, uh, very uh, basic in its operation. I haven't got any problems with it. This airplane is built as a day VFR airplane. I do have navigation lights on it. I don't have any uh, landing lights. Uh, my instrument panel isn't even fully illuminated. The, um, there's probably no problem with making it full IFR except for cost. And uh, as anybody that's been dealing with airplanes knows, you can put an endless amount of money into it and do whatever you want. It's a good stable platform. Uh, it uh, would be fine at night. The uh, only drawback to doing that, probably with this engine, I have a limited amount of electrical power. 
and to put landing lights and uh, an extensive amount of radio equipment in there, I'd be running a little short of electrical power. The panel basically is simple. Uh, the only thing I've added over what the kit supplied was a turn coordinator. I do have a handheld uh, uh, transmitter receiver that's wired into the aircraft antenna and to the aircraft bus. I've got a handheld GPS that's mounted on the panel and tied into the aircraft bus. Um, basically, uh, it's, uh, it's a basic airplane, but uh, I have good reception, uh, good range on the transmitter. Of course, GPS works fine in a bubble canopy like this. I uh, don't have to have any external antenna on that. And, but uh, basically, I built it according to the manual, according to the kit. And that's what makes it affordable and doable. It's a good design. Uh, there are things that I would do differently if I were building it. For one thing, I'd put electric flaps on it. These, these have, uh, this one has a manual flap, and uh, at 80 mile an hour, it's a pretty good pull to get the last notch of flaps. And uh, there is uh, some uh, airplanes flying now with electric flaps on them. It's quite easy to do if I were doing it when I were building it. And uh, one of the things that I've always wished I had was a steerable nose wheel, but that's not a practical thing for this airplane. This is a castering nose wheel. And um, in uh, October, when I landed here in a 35 knot quartering crosswind, it was a little busy. The airplane uh, has a, a GSC ground adjustable wooden prop. Uh, you can uh, set the uh, pitch on the prop to suit your particular purposes. I've got this one set at about 23 degrees, which gives me a good cruise and really a pretty good climb out. Solo, I can run 1,400 feet per minute very easily, and I get about 130 mile an hour cruise out of it. I've got 16 gallons of usable fuel in it, and I, uh, as a general rule, burn around four gallons an hour, which is, uh, a little bit more than what you want to sit still in an airplane. One of the uh, biggest jobs in building a home-built airplane, especially composite like this, is the uh, paint job. If you're not a painter, it can be a rather daunting task. It's made of fiberglass, and fiberglass has pinholes, and there's a lot of work filling those pinholes, and a lot of the sanding, and then when we got to the time of shooting the coat of paint, I uh, shot the first coat, and then I had a friend help me on the second coat who was more experienced in painting because it can be quite a job. And painting, what you run into is runs, dull spots, shiny spots, thick spots, and thin spots. <laughs> it, it, uh, it takes a bit of practice. And uh, at $200, $200 a gallon, uh, you don't feel like practicing a great deal. I guess I'm a cheapskate. The reason I went with a tricycle gear airplane is because I've got most of my flying time on a tricycle gear. And in Kansas, with uh, the winds that we do have, it's a little bit easier airplane to land. And uh, basically, it was for experience purposes. I've only got about 10 hours tailwheel time, and the rest of my time has all been with tricycle gear. So uh, it was a logical choice for me. As far as performance is concerned on the different landing gears, there's maybe three to five mile an hour difference depending on the airplane. Uh, weight has more to do with it than the landing gear configuration. The reason that you see a white airplane all over the field here is that the uh, problem with the epoxies is that the seam on the top of the fuselage is a builder joined seam. And the seam on the top of the wing, along the spar, and along the trailing edge are all seams that we have builders have done, and uh, so it has been a room temperature cure. The temperature of this airplane in the hot sun on a summer day is going to be considerably cooler than any of the dark colors. The parts that the manufacturer gave us as far as molded fiberglass parts have been autoclaved and are good for a high temperature. The seams that we do are room temperature cure, and the first time they get real hot, they will tend to soften just a little bit. So the seams on your spars and the top of the airplane are the ones that you want to keep as cool as possible, and the white airplane doesn't.